Learn how to create fast, flexible, efficient, real-time graphics and AR using SDFs and Metaspark. Hey everybody, it's Heather Dunaway-Smith. I'm an illustrator, animator, game designer uh, that's now an XR artist, exploring the evolution of storytelling using brand new technologies like augmented reality and virtual reality. And today we're going to be talking about um, a technique for creating real-time graphics uh, using Metaspark and SDF. Uh, sign distance fields. Uh, basically to create the equivalent of what you would think of as a vector, so graphics on the fly that are very small file size and also really easy to make. I had to use this technique recently um, for a project of mine that launched at um, Art Basel slash Miami Art Week uh, in December, so last month, and uh, it was really helpful so I thought I would take you behind the scenes and show you how it's done. Before we get to that, uh, if you would care to, go ahead and like and subscribe. I talk about all of these future technologies and my art practice and uh, how I meld the two together as I'm exploring this brand new medium. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and jump in to SDFs and Metaspark. So the piece that I created for Miami Art Week was called Rebirth, which was a a reimagining of Botticelli's uh, Birth of Venus. And I had to have um, water as part of this composition. And I wanted it to be dynamic and animated, but I had kind of run out of disk space as far as like the file size constraints of actually uploading to Instagram, which is what Spark uploads to if you're creating AR experiences with it. And um, so I turned to SDFs and so let's talk about SDFs, um, what they are and what they can do. SDF stands for Signed Distance Field. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a way of creating real-time graphics um, on the fly using either like code or patches. There's a variety of different ways to create them, but we're gonna be using patches in Metaspark Studio. As you can tell, this is the layout. Hello, Venus. And you can tell that she um, is just existing in a void right now and we need to add some water. So what I'm gonna start doing first is adding a null object. So I'm gonna select the landscape, uh, which is basically what holds all of these things. I'm gonna right click, select add object and select null object. You can think of null objects um, kind of like folders. They hold other things. Um, let's go ahead and drag this up over here. We'll give it a good a title because you always want to title your stuff so you know what you're doing. Um, now, with inside this null, I'm going to add a plane. I'm actually going to add two planes, but I right click, select Add Object, go to Plane. And let's go ahead and first rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And then we're actually going to make it larger and position it. Oh no, she's drowning in a, <laughs> in a vaporwave checkerboard. Um, just kidding. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and position this appropriately. We'll move it down until it's just kind of hovering beneath these islands and the shell. And now we'll move it back. Okay, so it's within the occluder. I'll do occlusion on another video, um, but for now we'll just position this here. And um, now let's go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to call this Water SDF. Now we need to create materials. So let's select water SDF number one and we'll go over here to materials and hit the plus button. And we're gonna create a new one. You can tell I have a lot of materials in here. And it defaults to this name. You can double click on this if you want or select it in the left hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this water SDF mat. So that's my water SDF material. Okay, now that we've renamed that, um, let's go ahead and go to the inspector over here on the right hand side and set up uh, the settings for it. So for this SDF um, mat, we're gonna make it flat. Let's go ahead and add a nice color. I'm gonna desaturate this just a little bit. That's fine. And then we're going to um, make this associative alpha under blend mode. And I'm going to drop the opacity um, down to like, actually, rather than associative, let's do additive. And let's drop the opacity down to like 30%. And, um, and now we're actually going to add a, an alpha mat. So an alpha mat is added here under alpha. We're going to put a check mark. And what it does is it actually acts, acts as a mask. So it tells, um, it tells Spark 
where to show that color or that that piece of information. So I've already uploaded one. Um, it's just a, a white um, circle with soft edges, which I have titled Water Alpha 2. So you can see here is a little mini version of it. It's just a, a blurry white circle. And that's going to create the, um, it's going to fit nicely within this sphere that I have all of the um, the landscape. Now what we're going to do is duplicate that SDF material and we're going to use it for the water under plane that we added um, above the SDF. So we're going to right click, select duplicate, or hit command D. I'm just going to double click to rename. We'll go ahead and name that water background mat. That's fine. And a lot of these settings are actually going to stay the same. So let me open this and let's take a look. It's going to be flat. We're going to keep that um, color, but we're actually going to drop it down just a little bit in richness. We want it to be slightly darker than the swirls on top. We're going to keep the alpha the same. And, um, and we need to select um, double sided. And uh, that's because we rotated it 90 degrees. And we're going to change the blend mode to associative alpha, and we're going to drop up the opacity rather to about 70. And actually now that I'm thinking about it, I need to go to the water SDF and also make that double sided. And now let's add the water um, background to water under plane. Um, so I've selected it in the scene hierarchy. I'm gonna go over to materials, hit the plus button, scroll down through my mini materials and select water background matte. And now you can see I have this nice soft blue circle, right? That's like a good beginning for water. And now now is where it actually gets fun. So let's go ahead and um, and uh, create the SDF. Um, so uh, well, first off, we're going to need our patch editor. You can go up to the view menu and select patch editor. Sorry, that's off screen, but um, I think you guys know where that is. I'll try to go back and take a screenshot of it for you. And, um, and now let's go ahead and create an SDF. To create any sort of object, you can either right click or you can double click. I'm just gonna right click and type in SDF. And let's make a star to begin with. Okay. And with this star, what we're gonna do is um, keep a lot of these settings the same. 0.5 is fine for the center. Let's make the outer radius a little bit smaller down to 0.2 and then I'm going to change the inner, rad inner radius much much smaller so um, 0 0.001 should work and I want this to be a 12 sided star okay let's go ahead and um, bring in the texture from the water SDF uh, material so right here under texture this is where you could add like a rasterized image if you had like a JPEG or a ping or something like that that you wanted to add but we're actually going to create the texture on the fly but we need to feed it into this material so um, in the patch editor so uh, under texture or next to texture we have this little arrow click that and that's actually going to allow us to pipe something directly into it. So let's go ahead and formulate what that is. Uh, I'm going to start with a um, that star that I created. And I'm also going to create an SDF circle. And then we're going to go ahead and um, I want to add a twirl to this star. And let's go SDF twirl or twist rather. And I'm going to keep most of these things the same. The pivot is fine. Let's let's go ahead and increase um, the twist, though. And now what we want to do is actually add um, this star with a twist to the circle. And we're going to be using a, an SDF mix patch. So you can also drag out from these patches, and it will auto automatically open up the, um, the patch uh, options. And we're going to type in SDF mix. There she blows. Um, so what? What it's actually done is already piped in the star into position number one, and then we're going to click and drag the circle into position number two. And now we need to actually connect it to this diffuse texture. So we're going to actually add a step real quick in between them. And all right, so it looks like nothing has changed. Um, we're going to add some animation in a second, but just to make sure that everything is um, is actually being piped in properly, I'm going to double check the mix. So right now um, the mix is set to zero, but let's set it. It goes from zero to um, to one, so that's 0.5. You can tell that we're starting to get some nice little swirly action. So that's what 0.1 would look like. 0.8, 0.9. 
it's almost disappeared. Okay, so now you get the gist. So what we need to do is actually, um, to create an animation, we're gonna use an animation patch. And in this particular instance, I'm gonna use a loop animation because I want it to loop over and over. And I also want it to be mirrored. So it will go one way and then it will reverse and it will be nice a nice undulating animation. And I'm gonna change my duration to 10 because I already know I want it to be kind of slow and subtle, like, like a water whirlpool. Um, from here, we need to add a transition patch. So, gotta spell it right though. All right, there we go. And by default, transition patches are actually vector three, so they take three um, different inputs or uh, coordinates. And we actually need to put in one as just a number. So we're gonna click on that little drop down at the bottom and select number. We want it to go from zero to one, that's fine. Um, and then we also want to um, change the easing. So currently it's, it's linear easing, which means it's just gonna go from one value to another, but we want a little, a little dip, a little like a hesitation and then speeding up and then slowing down again. So I'm gonna click on the curve and select, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go, we'll do an in and an out. And now I'm gonna drag this value into the mix option and it's like magic. It is uh, animating. You can see it, the values are changing right here in the progress and it's changing the amount of the mix between this star twirl or star twist that we created and the circle. And it should um, loop infinitely um, because it's a, a loop animation. If it's too slow or too fast, you could increase or decrease the, um, the duration. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. Um, what, I, what I did in the final effect is I actually wanted to create like a few more layers. Um, let me just double check these settings. Yeah, that all looks good. Um, so I wanted to create a little bit of variation. Uh, I'm gonna right click on the water SDF just to create another one. And I'm gonna move it um, up in space just, just a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate it all right just like that and I'm, I'm not not seeing anything and I think that's because I'm not actually seeing um, it's not being rendered properly and that's because of the render options which I should have set this up earlier but it's good that it's good that I made a mistake because now you can see how to solve things um, so let back in the water SDF material under this advanced render options we're gonna um, deselect right to depth. So what this is doing is it's actually looking, it's enabling us um, to see the stuff that's below these swirls. And now that that has been enabled, you can tell that I've added two of these SDFs, creating that nice kind of like layered effect. Um, if you wanted to, you could also rotate this just a little bit to create a tiny bit of variation. And you might even add a third, which I think I ultimately did. So right click duplicate again. Let's go ahead and move, move this dude up in space just a little bit and rotate it a little bit more. And when you layer these things together, it can create like a really nice, um, complicated looking animation. And that's it. We have a magical swirling whirlpool below our Venus and we did it all with patches and the power of SDFs. Um, yeah, SDFs are a great technique to put into your arsenal because um, they're tiny file sizes, like I said, so they're gonna run um, very well on a large variety of different mobile devices, no matter how old or advanced they are. Uh, they're fast to set up. Uh, you can create really complex looking shapes um, pretty simply, and it's non-destructive, so you don't have to um, you know, re-render things uh, over time. It's just, it's a really fast, easy way of creating stuff that looks really cool. If you like this, be sure to uh, like and subscribe, hit the little bell. I'll be making other videos where I dig into the t other techniques that I use to create this piece. Um, so uh, hopefully you'll learn something in those as well. Hopefully you learned something today. Uh, and yeah, happy making.